Hello, everybody. Um, we're delighted to have Nathan Naswood today. Sorry, Elton, I'm sorry. Elton Naswood from uh, Red Circle Project at AIDS Project Los Angeles, who will be presenting today. Um, this will be followed by a brief discussion with Elton and also media studies professor Gina Lamb. So welcome and thank you very, very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today, um, but before I begin my presentation, I'd like to formally introduce myself. Uh, what I said is, hello, my name is Elton Noswood. I'm of the Near to the Water Clan, born for the Edgewater Clan. My maternal grandfather's clans of the Mexican people and my paternal grandfather's clans of the Tango people. This is how I am Navajo. I was taught at a very young age to introduce myself in that way when I am speaking in front of an audience or actually speaking via the internet today um, to first of all identify myself to the creator, second of all to identify myself to other people who I may be speaking to and more specifically other Native Americans um, who I'm speaking to because in the Navajo culture our clanships are our relationships kind of like American last names if you think about clans in that way, but it establishes our relationships, which also come with roles and responsibilities. So I wanted to be able to do that. Um, as mentioned before, I'm the program coordinator of the Red Circle Project at AIDS Project Los Angeles, which is the only HIV prevention program in Los Angeles County that specifically targets the Native American Alaska Native community. Uh, Los Angeles County, by the way, has the highest urban Indian population in the country, meaning that we have over 130,000 Native Americans who live in the county of Los Angeles, and yet we only have one program that, that begins to discuss and to, begins to do prevention work with the disease of HIV and AIDS. So I'm very happy to be here today to be able to talk about the project, but also talk about the movement in which the project has been able to um, integrate, which would include social media. Um, the Red Circle Project is currently adapting a CDC intervention called Community Promise. Uh, Community Promise is an intervention that utilizes storytelling as one of the core elements. And we feel that utilizing storytelling, the mechanism of storytelling to do HIV prevention work is critically important so we can reach out to our community in that way. And so we're currently adapting the intervention um, right now, we're hoping to utilize social media to get the information to our community, specifically in Los Angeles County, but also nationally. Um, I also want to mention that there are no specific interventions approved by the CDC that are specifically for the Native American community. So by being able to adapt this intervention, we are actually kind of setting precedents to be able to let other Native communities in the country know that this can be done and can be utilized. So we're very excited to be able to do that. Um, our project specifically targets Native American gay men or culturally known as two-spirit men, and also Native American transgenders. And so our services provided provide support groups, workshops, the intervention, um, community events um, as well for these two specific, uh, to, to these two specific populations. Um, so that is the Red Circle Project. That's actually what we're beginning to do with our um, intervention of Community Promise. Um, I want to be able to show a short documentary that was produced by the University of Southern California's film department. We had two individuals, um, one of them being a producer, Tariq Tomei, who came to the project um, about a year ago and wanted to do a documentary on Two-Spirit People as a part of a film project. So he came and not knowing what he would produce, he produced a short documentary on Two-Spirit culture, but also the Red Circle Project. And I want to share with you a little clip about um, myself and two other clients who are part of the film that talks about their understanding of being Native American and being gay and being two-spirit individuals. So with that said, we're going to show a clip um, called Simple Origins from As They Are, Two-Spirit People in the Modern World. Thank you. We wanted to share a little bit a little bit about traditional storytelling, utilizing this documentary. And this is only one segment of the documentary that, um, that helped to explain and, came and gave different perspectives, cultural perspectives, on individuals who identify as Two-Spirit, as gay men, who live in Los Angeles, but also giving, giving their cultural understanding of who they are as, 
as gay men and as two-spirit people. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to define is the term two-spirit. Um, and for some of you who may not know what that term is, it's more of a recent term that has been adopted by the native LGBT community to be able to identify ourselves with a term that's more empowering but also more culturally acceptable. And the term actually is an, Asinab um, an, an Anishinaabe term that was adopted in the 1990s at the International Two-Spirit Gathering in Canada. And it's a term that actually translates to mean to have a male spirit and a female spirit embodied into one individual. And so under having that understanding, that term is actually well more accepted than other terms which may be more demeaning. And one of those examples is Burdash, which is, a, a, which is an anthropological term that is actually translate in to, translates to mean male whore or kept boy. Um, so the two-spirit term is kind of a reclaiming of identity for our community. And so it's been more well accepted. One thing, though, about the term is that it's not applicable to all tribes that not all individuals who are native and identify as LGBT will use that term to spirit um, because we have over 500 different tribes. And for some tribes, particularly like the Navajo, they wouldn't use that term to spirit because it would also um, connotate having a negative evil spirit as well. So, uh, but I myself as a Navajo gay male, as a Nugle, I utilize that term to spirit while I'm living in an urban area like Los Angeles because it's easily more acceptable and understood but if I were on the reservation, I would use the traditional term nagle to describe myself or describe myself as a Navajo gay male as well. So, uh, you know, it's very different. It's a self-identifying term. But needless to say, um, we're wanting to utilize the media through storytelling to begin to talk about some of our cultural issues um, and specifically more so about HIV prevention. So having individuals being able to talk on camera, um, talking about their livelihood growing up as Native people and how that may, may or may not have affected their behaviors and their risks that they have. And so we're in the process right now of um, interviewing some of our clients and utilizing them in what we're calling role model stories. And as a part of the role model stories, we're um, allowing peer advocates to go out and utilize these stories in the community to educate our community about HIV prevention. Um, one of the interesting things that we're going to be doing with the social media piece is pro providing these stories on the internet and allowing our community to utilize the internet to view these stories and see how that impacts their life. Um, I already foresee a challenge is how we're going to be able to evaluate their perception using the media. And so that's something we're going to be looking at being able to do. But utilizing stories like you just saw on the internet, whether it's YouTube, on our website, and begin to really have people talk and relate about the issues of being native LGBT or two-spirit, um, but as well as their risk for HIV and AIDS. And so that's the piece in which we're adopting this intervention called Community Promise. Uh, another challenge that I think that we're going to be experiencing is, is how do we, how do we, how well storytelling, the traditional use of storytelling that we have as native people be impacted by the use of social media? Are we going to revitalize our culture by doing this, or would we be impacting our culture by doing this? So I think those are some critical questions that we're going to be asking or trying to understand within our communities is how will our oral tradition be utilized in a useful way through social media? And so I kind of want to leave that question out for discussion for people and see how that may impact them or how they may understand that, um, um, that issue specifically. And then also talking about issues of native LGBT, meaning native, lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirit people, and how that may assist them as well in, in their own understanding. So um, thank you for this time, for being able to explain this. And I think right now we're going to go into the discussion portion of, um, of this presentation. Thank you, Hat. Gina, do you want to maybe start and say something? questions how, how do you do your um, outreach like what um, where do you go to do, like if you pr produce these stories and take them out physically into the community where do you go how do you find your participants and your programs well interesting enough and that's a great question in terms of how do we begin to identify our community specifically the two-spirit community and the transgender community and how do we begin to do our outreach um, that has been challenging 
from the inception of our project, which started in 2003, um, because our community is one of the only ethnic communities here in Los Angeles County that doesn't have specific neighborhoods or barrios or areas in the city in which we can locate and find our community. And so that has been a challenge, and our people are across the whole county. Um, um, and there are only two individuals, me and another staff, that do this work. So that's a challenge. What we've been, been able to do to help overcome that issue is we've been going to cultural events. So specifically like powwows, which are held almost every month in the county, we go out and do outreach. We'll have a booth and a table, and we'll also have begin, and we'll also provide a, a, an opportunity for them to do HIV testing. So we bring a mobile testing unit to these powwows. Um, and interestingly enough, our outreach efforts have really become, become accepted in our community. We have people that are calling us that are organizing these powwows to say, are you bringing your booth? Are you bringing your HIV testing unit so our people can test it? Which is a good thing, but, um, but beyond that, reaching out to our community, that's where we draw and begin to see people who identify as two-spirit or transgender as well. Um, so we um, utilize our cultural events as a place to be able to do that. Um, recently, have we been able to set up a Facebook page for the Red Circle Project, and that has been really, really, really tremendous um, in helping to outreach, because we're getting individuals who are contacting, contacting us via the Facebook. And so we started that maybe about, I would say, three or four months ago, and we're getting over 100 different hits a month, which is a good thing. So people are tapping in and knowing that that resource is available, and we've been able to do outreach in that way. where people will leave us messages and then we can contact them back either via Facebook or if we want to do more personally via the telephone to contact them. And we've actually been able to recruit at, at least one individual who has come to our program because of that use of Facebook as well. Yes, I, um, in, it is an interesting question of taking the tradition to the new social media network and how to make that work because it seems like um, the power in connecting with Native communities, especially with people who are HIV positive, is sort of the physical connection and the healing process that you can go through by being connected to a physical community. So, yeah, I'm just wondering about that question. Is there ways that it, people get involved through social network and then can come and get physical services? Like, how, how is that, how does that, how do you see that full circle? Um, you know, I think that's some, um, you know, some great advice, and I think that's actually the way I think we're going to want to, you know, propose um, this intervention is to be able to utilize social media as an outreach network per se and an education tool, and then follow up and actually bring bring them in for services if need be. And we're actually training um, now peer advocates and community advocates who are actually past participants of our project to be able to go out and reach out to the community in that way, um, whether it's individually or whether it's the community as a whole, we're wanting to use these clients to be able to do that as well. And so we're um, in the process of doing trainings, um, fairly recent, we're gonna start those trainings. And so I think that's the mechanism in which we're gonna be able to utilize um, social media as an outreach tool and as an educational tool, but also follow up with these peer advocates and community out advocates to make that personal one-on-one -on -one connection, either whether it's for services, whether it's for HIV testing, or whether it's for the support groups that we provide as well.